In this video, we will explore one of Ada's many POV cameras. And I think this is one of the bigger ones, which is a 4K, I would say box camera with internal optical zoom. So as I said, it's 4K, it has SDI and HDMI out here. We have a Hirose connector for the serial connection and the power as well. And it's hooked up with a Skahoy inline 22 controller for manipulating all the internal parameters. Now, in fact, this is communicating as a Visca camera. Normally, Visca is the protocol we use with pan tilt zoom cameras like uh, from Sony and Lumens and October and, and Ida as well. So, um, and that means that we normally have a joystick for controlling the pan and tilt dimensions and typically the zoom dimension by rotating the joystick on the top. In this case, and with many POV cameras from manufacturers like Ada, we uh, still use Visca for all the parameters like shutter speeds and exposure modes and also zoom in this case, although we don't have a pan and tilt dimension. They are super useful for a lot of fixed installations where you don't need that or for installations in, in race cars or in scientific applications and so on. If we look at the camera, it's a progressive scan CMOS sensor that it has and the lens is a, a 12 times optical zoom that it features. And that makes it really perfect for broadcast and pro audio and video and even security application and uh, I think scientific applications as well, which some of the features will um, kind of indicate. So uh, if we look at how this camera would normally be controlled, it has a, a cable here, which has a little uh, thumb joystick for up, down, left, right to navigate the menu inside. So the other things from this breakout cable is that we have power and to connect it to the Skaho universe, we use a ethernet to serial converter, fairly inexpensive device that connects this into your network. And everything is networked nowadays. So you have single cables coming in and out of your Skaho controller, for instance. In this case, you can see we have a single cable power and signals, uh, control signals. So that's such a great uh, thing about uh, network devices and we can bring it all together with a big you know, hop and fiber and everything. So that's um, obviously very, very, very useful. Now we'll be looking at the controller going through all the features that we can select for this camera. And um, the, the way we have laid it out is kind of like if it was a PDC controller, but without a joystick over here. So the lower row of buttons would be your camera selector. And since I have only one camera, we have only one button for selecting camera number one. So that's obviously selected right now. And the remaining buttons are divided with a little um, fancy color division so that it's, it's really a menu selection. Very explicitly uh, set up here, zoom brings up zoom options on the encoder knobs, focus brings up focus options. Then you can see white balance, exposure, image and advanced image features. Uh, AE, which is um, compensation features, levels, special stuff, and then buttons for the on-screen menu. So um, in other applications, you'll find that if you take something like the PTC Fly, do you know that controller? PTC Fly is one of Skahoy's uh, most popular PTC controllers. It has uh, six buttons and four encoder knobs. So it's kind of a subset of what you see right here. And we do something super clever with our four-way button functionality, which allows you to still browse through a number of menu options by uh, pressing the upper edge on the shift key that will cycle you through four or five different menus. Menus. In this case, we had enough buttons to give you direct access. And that's the secret to choosing your Skahoy controller. That is really to think how, you know, how, how many buttons would I prefer to have to control whatever? Or how few buttons would I prefer to have to make it look simple and behave simple towards my users? In this case, we have chosen to have an extensive menu spread across 12 different buttons to give you directly access to these features. So now let's look at what we can actually do. So uh, let's go to the zoom menu at first, because normally we would zoom using a joystick, the rotation function on a joystick on such as a PTC fly controller. Now in this case, we have mapped it to an encoder. Again, remember, Skahoy units are configurable. So it's so easy to just take zoom and instead of assigning it to a joystick dimension, you can assign it to an encoder knob to actually uh, zoom in stepwise. Let's see how this works. So you can see with this knob, I, as I'm uh, turning the knob, you can see that I'm actually uh, stepping in sort of with the zoom 
So I'm going closer by doing it like this. I can also adjust the uh, speed limit of the zoom using this knob up here. And I have um, steady shot, I can turn on and off. So these are all related to kind of the camera dimension of this one. Uh, obviously steady shot wouldn't be so easy to demonstrate on a stable environment like this, but you can see that the displays you always find on Skaho units makes it very um, easy to see whether or not steady shot is enabled or not by um, the little label that you see in the display. Now digital zoom can also be turned on and off and as it is the case with many um, uh, Visca cameras you'll find that uh, enabling digital zoom gives you access to a uh, the, the full uh, zoom range or an extended zoom range of the camera so as you in this case, turn this knob to adjust the zoom. You would just go further in. You will automatically step into the digital domain if you enable this uh, feature. So we see zooming in, zooming out. And let's just zoom out so we have uh, something like this around this. You can also see that the little indication of the zoom factor is something we can disable in this camera. But now I show it to you. So uh, the on-screen indication of the zoom um, level is, is shown to you. If we go to the focus menu, you uh, see we are currently in manual focus mode. So by turning this knob, we can bring it out of focus or we can bring it back into focus. And again, we have a focus uh, speed control over here. So the, the steps that I, I take to do focus, I need to turn it uh, more times to, uh, to focus the, uh, the image. I can do that by uh, adjusting the speed here. It was more it was very easy for us to see that the the uh, focus was active here. Now, if I zoomed uh, further in, then you would be able to see more um, precisely how the focus was adjusted. I'll now bring it back into auto because that's going to be most useful for the rest of our demonstration here. Now, if we move on to the white balance menu, what will you find there? Obviously, white balance associated uh, features like auto white balance, which is the current selection we have. Or you can have indoor, you can have outdoor, we have one push uh, uh, balance, which will be triggered by pressing or turning this knob. And then finally, if you go to the uh, auto tracking white balance here and the manual white balance, in particular, you have uh, red gain and blue gain. And if you notice how these numbers are actually picked up from the camera. So going into the manual mode, these are the, the current settings picked up from the camera and which I can now adjust uh, to my liking. So if I'm turning this knob, you'll see that I'm affecting the red level of, um, of the white balance here on the camera. So I could uh, shape my image a little bit. And by the way, a little disclaimer, you see there's some blinking light here. It's really not the fault of the camera. It is my um, horrible studio lighting, which is um, uh, flickering. And uh, unfortunately, it's it's uh, giving a little bit of a flicker on the image here because we have some mixed lighting environments. So I'm sorry about that. Um, so that was a little bit of white about white balance in this camera. Now, if we go to exposure mode, you see the uh, usual array of exposure modes that you, we can have. We are currently in manual mode. So you see iris, the value of iris. Again, remember the way we integrate with cameras is that we actually, um, when you see f1.8 here, it is really the iris value that is used in the camera because we have aligned the number of values um, that we can select in the camera with the actual uh, lens values, which is uh, documented for the camera. And you see those in the display of a Skaho control. This is how we always roll with our integration with Visca cameras, being very precise, very close to the camera. So it's a native implementation. That's kind of the, the hot blood that uh, runs in the way our company does stuff. And you have shutter speed values as well, aligned with what is in the camera and uh, gain values over here also aligned with that. So if we look at the other modes, you have shutter speed. So this is shutter speed priority. You can now set the shutter speed. And unfortunately, none of these will match with my lighting in this uh, European frequency environment. So uh, there's no way we can really get rid of that uh, flicker there. The ADC um, also allows me to set um, uh, gain values over here. Um, and then, of course, you have the auto mode if you want to use that for the camera. But for the rest of this presentation, we would prefer to stay with the manual mode. So you can see that I'm able to adjust the iris and obviously it affects the image quite a lot. If I do so, um, it is stepwise like this. And uh, for the uh, shutter speed, I'm also able to adjust that obviously. And of course, if I gain the image, I can also affect how 
the uh, images overexposed even if I want to go that far. Now that's all exposure and white balance. Moving on to image, we have contrast, brightness, saturation and hue. Uh, I think you kind of know what these would do. So um, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but these dimensions are also available. If I go on to advanced image, we have auto saturating. Auto saturate, yes. Edge enhancement, which would be sharpness. We have uh, sense up, which is related to, let me see, uh, some digital exposure things. You would have to read in the manual about that. I'm um, not 100% sure how to explain it here. But the point is that we have a really special feature in this camera, which is mapped out onto our Visca controllers. Again, we put a lot of pride into making sure that these integrations are, are really uh, tied up with the specific features, the unique features of these cameras. Noise reduction on off is also available here on the various levels. In this case, pretty standard that we have three levels of noise reduction that's uh, seen in many Visca cameras. Then if we go to the auto exposure mode, we would actually need to go back to exposure and set it into auto exposure mode. Because if we are here, then we would access features like exposure compensation. If you enable exposure compensation, it essentially means that you set the level of uh, brightness in a sense higher or lower than the um, average that the camera would figure out itself. So with AE brightness set to seven and the level you currently see on the picture, if I reduce it like this, you can see that it's it's actually going to a, a light, a darker image, or I can set it higher. So now it's, it's essentially overexposing the picture a little bit here. We have um, in this menu also backlight compensation, which is uh, also a feature for automatically exposed images and the speed by which the um, automatic compensation should be performed is set by um, this, uh, whether you want it to act quick or fast. Uh, sorry, fast or slow. Um, I'm just going back to uh, manual here again. Then we can go on to levels. And now you see some of the scientific features available or scientific. I mean, these are really um, detailed features. Like you can set the, the black level, obviously, which is very useful. And then you can also set the uh, white level here in uh, precise values from 90 IRE up to 108 IRE. Um, values here uh, on this knob. You have gamma mode over here, which also uh, gives you some um, control over how the image output is and then lens shading here. Lens shading is uh, pretty nice. If you look at the edges of this uh, image, you can see that the edges are it's compensating for some light fall off in the um, in the corners of the image. That's uh, what I see the effect of uh, lens shading um, doing when I'm adjusting this one. And then in the special menu, we have picture effect, which is, <laughs> I don't know if it's useful or not to invert the image, but obviously it could be for scientific uh, applications, a gray tone image here. And then you have various kinds of red, green, blue shaded versions of the image. So a, a lot of uh, artistic values uh, here and potentially also um, scientifically useful features um, available on the controller. We have defog. Uh, on uh, off and auto on this one day and night feature here, which essentially if it paints it uh, black the image if we go to night mode and then we have uh, backlight compensation once again over here. So that was the nine menu options. And then if you even want to go further into the on screen menu, you have access to enable it by pressing the OSD button. And then you have navigation keys here. So you can see that I'm able to go down into the OSD menu. Well, in a sense, you don't need it because on a Skyhoy controller, all of these uh, features are mapped out on your buttons as actions you can assign to your Skyhoy controller. Uh, but maybe let's say that you have a controller where you only map out a certain number of these features and you prefer to let the rest and maybe more special and unused features stay in the OSD menu, then you still have a way to access it uh, on your set just not without enabling it on the output. So you can see we are able to navigate. I can also enter one of these. I can go up and get down again. So here we have um, the white balance, which we left in the, um, I think we can go to white balance here. You can see the values are actually the same on the display. So since we are navigating the menu here, let's uh, increase the, um, or change the value of the, the blue. Uh, so you can see it's also changing here. The blue gain is uh, changed on the uh, controller. 
And um, then I could navigate to, let's say, this one, the, the red. And of course, you can see how I'm changing values by using this uh, arrow key for operating the on-screen menu. Yes, uh, let's uh, then return out of the on-screen menu. It's basically done like that. So that's also a part of the Skyhawk controller. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the inline 22, one of um, the uh, very, very versatile controllers in the Skyhawk range, working with the ADA 4K Ultra HD um, box camera with uh, internal 12 times optical zoom and a lot of great features. Hope you like it and um, let us know if you have any questions. You can uh, comment on the video or send an email to our support section. We will be super happy to help you. Remember to subscribe and uh, follow us on social media so you are always in the loop of news from Skyhoy.